What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got a very interesting knife battle video to do with you guys. This is the Spyderco Pair 3. This particular version is in Maximum, and the Benchmade Bug Out. And uh, this particular version has been modded. I want to point that out. Mine is modded, but we're going to be talking about all of the different uh, variations of each knife that are available, and we're going to be discussing, you know, pros and cons to each. These are both incredible EDC knives, and it took me a modification to the bug out to really love it, but I've spent a lot of time with each of these knives, and I uh, I feel confident in sharing my thoughts with you guys. So before we get started here, I just want to remind everybody again that um, I am currently at 74 patrons. At uh, the moment that we hit 80 patrons, I'm going to be doing a free to enter giveaway for everybody, not just patrons, literally everybody. We have the Giant Mouse uh, Clyde in Micarta and Elmax. Uh, donated by Spirited Whiskey. Thank you very much. And we have the Mazarine Nimrod in Carbon Fiber and uh, M390, dom donated by my buddy Shaker MT. Um, I'm going to be giving both of these knives away. About a $350 value between the two. If you would like to help me reach that goal, you can follow the link in the description, head down to my Patreon, have a look around. There are benefits to joining certain tiers. Um, I do, of course, have uh, once a week, Patreon exclusive videos and my Metal Complex Knight sticker and my logo sticker available at lower tiers. But as for right now, anybody who joins um, will get a shout out. Whether you want me to plug your Instagram, your YouTube channel, or you want me to say something funny or make fun of myself, whatever, as long as it's appropriate for YouTube. So if that sounds good to you, uh, check out that link. Anyways, so these two knives have um, just been <laughs> extremely popular ever since they came out. Um, there is a lightweight version of the Para 3 in FRN, uh, and then there is, of course, the standard bug out, the blue one, which is actually originally what this one was. I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, scales out. Not that anybody is unfamiliar with the scales, but just, just so that we have kind of a visual representation. Put the scales up there for the bug out. Actually, why don't we move the Para 3 up? So that's how it comes standard. Now, I don't want to say it's kind of different. You know, the bug out standard definitely is in FRN, but the Para 3, I don't, I don't look at it like that. I don't think people generally do because the Para 3, Para 3 lightweight is almost a different knife. Almost. It's still going to be considered in this discussion. This is not going to be a typical va battle video where I, um, I, uh, you know, score everything. We're just going to talk. I want to keep the flow going. I don't want it to be that structured. So, First off, let's go ahead and get a measurement between the two. I want to help people make a choice. People have been sort of laboring over this choice for a while. I want to help them. I'm not nearly the first person to do a battle video like this, but I wanted to throw my throw my two cents in here. The uh, pair of three is coming in at about seven and a quarter inches overall. From tip to scale, you're looking at three inches on the blade and about 2.65, maybe not quite 2.75. You could call it 2.75 inches of cutting edge. The uh, bug out is coming in at seven and a half inches overall, so just a quarter inch longer. Uh, the overall um, blade length is, it's probably about 3.4, and then your cutting edge is about 3.2, 3.15, something like that. Um, just so you guys, is, is that coming in exactly right? Can you guys see what I'm talking about there? Yeah. So you're getting a little more blade and a little more cutting edge with the bug out. You're also getting a longer knife overall. How about weight? So here's where this is going to be thrown off because the weight on the bug out, the weight on my bug out is heavier because it's in titanium. These are flitanium scales. It's also got titanium hardware. So this guy's coming in at 2.93. Now I believe the original is coming in something between uh, 0.75 ounces and an ounce lighter. So it actually can be down, I wanna say it's it's under two ounces actually. Now the Para 3 G10 coming in a little bit heavier, funny enough, than the full titanium bug out of 3.53 ounces. This way, I mean like people are like, oh the, the weight on your titanium bug out is so much heavier than the original. I'd rather have the lighter. Um, <laughs> To me, anything under four ounces is not something that I notice. I just don't, I just don't notice it, you know? So three, between 1.8 ounces on the lightweight one, I think the Para 3 lightweight weighs something like two point, what does it weigh, like 2.5 ounces or maybe even less than that. It's super duper lightweight. I believe the standard version of the bug out coming in, uh, the uh, FRN scales is going to be the lightest between the two. So if you really want to know who wins the battle of 
you know, which one's lighter. The bug out simply has less material. Uh, the, uh, the inside of the uh, bug out is a, uh, a very teeny tiny cartridge liner, which you guys know, you know, the FRN skills, which it just wasn't something that I enjoyed. I don't like the feeling of that. Um, I would rather have the knife feel a little bit more substantial. And the same would go for the uh, Para 3. Now, the, this Para 3 was a gift for my wife, but if I were buying it for myself, this is the exact version of this knife that I would want. I have the exact versions of these knives that I want. Fortunately, though, both of these knives have so many versions, you can, you can pick your flavor. We can argue all day about FRN versus G10 versus titanium versus carbon fiber and exactly what type of tactical benefit you could get from subtracting 1.5 ounces off of your knife. But that doesn't sound like fun. That sounds ridiculous. So let's talk about um, some more meaningful stuff here. Um, so the, uh, the bug out, uh, the standard bug out comes in at about $118 in S30V and your FRN. The lightweight Para 3 comes in at something like, what is it, 93, it's like between 90 and $95. Uh, also, I believe in S30V, could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it comes in S30V and it has the FRN uh, scales. Both of those are pretty good prices. For whatever reason, because the Para 3 comes in at under $100, it, I mean, it is actually less, but it, it seems like a substantially better deal, right? Because it's under $100. Um, I kind of said, you know, I, I actually said in another video, I think the Benchmade bug out in its standard form is one of the most overrated knives out there. However, overrated, as many people pointed out in the comment section of that video, doesn't necessarily mean bad. Um, a lot of that had to do with price and my bias against FRN and how it felt. Now, after getting the bug out in the form that I like it in, and honestly, I would take it in G10 as well, um, I found that I, not only did I, you know, like it, I, I really liked it. So, the base form of the bug out is not one that I like, but I very much enjoy the bug out for its profile. Um, it's lightweight. I do enjoy that. And uh, now that it's in titanium, I really like the look of it. Um, so as far as carry profile goes, I'll tell you this. You know, the titanium scales are about the same thickness as the, um, the FRN ones. So using this as a comparison up against the uh, Para 3 here, I'll show you. The thickness on the bug out is definitely, definitely smaller. And even up against the lightweight, I've looked at the thickness of the um, the scales on the lightweight pair of three. It's still a little bit thinner. It's also smaller in profile. It's, I mean, it, it is a longer knife, but in terms of whether you look at it this way or you look at it this way, uh, the bug out is simply an easier knife to carry. Um, the other problem, now the standard pocket clip for the bug out, you can see there that the pocket clip that I have on it is not the standard pocket clip. Um, that is a, uh, that's a pocket clip that um, I actually ended up, I think it was actually Zach stuff that um, they gave me that pocket clip. And I asked him, I said, do you have a polished one? I'd really like to complete the look here by putting that polished clip on there. And he said, yeah, no problem. And um, now I've got the look. So the standard pocket clip for the uh, bug out looks like this, and it's a great pocket clip. It's a it's a fantastic pocket clip. I don't have a problem with it. I couldn't find the satin um, clip that uh, this one comes with, but the standard pocket clip on the uh, Para 3, I believe, am I correct in uh, thinking that? I believe it's just a standard um, Spyderco clip. And um, the problem with that is, is that this hole, and everybody knows about this, um, when you have the, uh, the Spyderco clip attached there, it's already not a deep carry clip. Right, if you can see there where it attaches, it, inc it it has you have so much of the knife sticking up out of your pocket. There's literally like this much of the knife sticking up out of your pocket to make room for that stupid lanyard hole. Now this is just on the G10 version because the FRN version has a wire clip, and that wire clip, while it's not my favorite aesthetic looking clip, it solves the issue with uh, the Para 3. So in order to make this much more carryable. And normally I'd be like, yeah, the pocket clip's something you can deal with. But no, the original pocket clip position on these G10 Para 3s is an absolute failure. It's not, not good. Um, you have to buy an MXG deep carry clip or a casing Lynch clip um, that makes room for the hole and at the same time creates an actual uh, deep carry or a much deeper carry position and is also a clip that does not create a hotspot because the original one did. So yeah, the G10, if you're going for the G10 version, yeah, the G10 pair of three is less expensive than what you would pay for a G10 bug out. Because you're gonna pay with, uh, some of these, um, some of these uh, retailers are doing exclusives in G10 and some of them have bug outs um, put together 
with um, Flytanium G10 scales for about 158 bucks. So yes, the G10 Para 3 coming in at about $140, $135 is coming in less expensive. But in my opinion, you're all, you almost have to buy an aftermarket clip, bringing it right up to the same price as the bug out. So they're very competitive, absolutely. So as far as FRN, you know, the, the pocket clip uh, positions on the FRN versions of each are great. Uh, the prices are somewhat competitive. The Para 3 is going to be a little bit better in price on the FRN version. Um, and, and then on your G10 versions, they're honestly going to come in about the same to get them in their base form, what people want. What's the steel like? Well, in the standard form of each, you're looking at S30V. Now, mine is the Maximum version. That's a much more expensive version. You do not need to spend the extra money on Maximum. Um, that's just how this one ended up because it was a gift. Uh, S30V is a fantastic steel. It's extremely appropriate in this price range. Very stainless, uh, well balanced. One of the only steels out there that, that was actually made for pocket knives. Um, you know, there's a lot of steels you can get on pocket knives, but most of them have different applications. And then as an afterthought, oh, hey, this might be good for a pocket knife. No, S30V was made for pocket knives. As far as I understand, Spyderco and Benchmade do, both do an excellent heat treat. Um, on top of that, we have excellent, uh, excellent blade shapes and blade geometries to accentuate the qualities of S30V. Um, I will tell you this, while the Para 3 has an excellent um, uh, grind, it is a little bit thicker to start with. It's about 140 thousandths. So when you get down to the edge, it's slicey, but it's not as slicey as the bug out. The bug out is super thin and is just razor thin behind the edge. Um, your performer, you know, your performance slicer, which one's going to be better? They're both good. The bug out's going to be a little bit better cutter, but it's going to be negligible, especially in an EDC setting. You know, you know, those of you who are asking me like, which one cuts better? Ask yourself, are you just going to be cutting open boxes and letters and, and tape and, you know, cutting open some plastic ties every now and then? You're not going to notice the difference. Not going to notice it. How about tip strength? Tip strength on both, um, <laughs> neither one of them is going to have a super strong tip. I will say, you know, they're they're so close. I mean, again, it's going to be negligible. I, I might give strength a little bit to the uh, pair of three. Again, assuming we're looking at exactly the same steel, which we're not. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, as far as aesthetics go, oh, excuse me, go. Uh, the bug out's got a nice uh, tumbling on it. The This Maximate Para 3 has a nice little tumbling on it. You, you can get a satin version, or actually the standard version of the Para 3, I believe is satin finished and might have that same tumbling on it. They both look great. All the edges and everything have been knocked down. There's not any real sharpness, anything like that to speak of. You can also get DLC coated versions of each. Spider Coast DLC is different from Benchmade's. I know that they use a tungsten based DLC that's up to like 80 something, low 80 Rockwell. I don't know that much about Benchmade's DLC, but I have seen that it holds up well. So if you're a DLC type of person, okay, uh, you can get it on each. You can also get partially serrated versions of each of these knives if you're somebody who likes um, serrated, uh, serrated edges. Um, moving down to, let's talk about ergonomics. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, both of these knives have excellent ergonomics. You're gonna lock into each of them. I'm a little bit biased towards knives that have a uh, choke up position, so I really like this. So I'm okay with the Para 3 having a little bit less cutting edge so that I can get my hands in whatever position that I want. A little more freedom with this guy, a little bit more control. I like that, especially on a knife that ha that is shorter overall. I love that I can get my, handle all the or my hand all the way around that and really control that blade. Um, this one, you, you're still going to be able to do just about everything that you can do with this guy. It's just you're a little more limited to the handle space. I mean, you can see there, we're actually looking at a longer knife on the bug out, but your handle space is limited to about from here to here. Whereas on the pair of three, you can hold it anywhere. I mean, like you might, you have almost an inch of extra handle space uh, on that um on that handle there. Now, some people don't like the aesthetics that it creates. I mean, I'll tell you right now, the bug out is definitely a, a more aesthetically appealing blade. I've always thought that spider cone knives kind of look like wounded birds, um, but uh, you know, it is what it is. The end result is a fantastic cutting tool. Both are great. The Spyderco Para 3, in my opinion, has better ergonomics, despite being a little bit more blocky. Both of them, whether you're looking at, you know, G aftermarket G10 scales, you're looking at titanium scales, or you're looking at the standard scales, um, both both knives 
uh, have, uh, you know, all the edges and everything are nicely knocked down. Para 3 having a little bit more blockiness, um, but everything's knocked down. Everything's smooth. You're not going to really have to deal with anything like that. As far as locks go, you're uh, looking at a uh, right-handed setup. I believe they don't have a left-handed version of the Para 3 yet, do they? If I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section. Check down there uh, because I don't want to, I don't want to give you guys the wrong information. Um, this is more of a right-handed setup here with this compression lock, but left-handed people can use it too, and it's pretty easy. You also have uh, pocket clip positions for tip up, tip down, right or left-handed carry. Uh, the Benchmade bug out, um, as far as the original scales go, yeah, even the original scales are the same. I'll show you guys here real quick. They do not have a uh, tip down carry position. It's tip up only, but it's right or left-handed and truly ambidextrous given the fact that you have a uh, an axis lock. So if if I'm correct in assuming that there is no left-handed version of the Para 3, the Benchmade Bugout is going to be a little bit more friendly to left-handed people. However, there are more moving parts in an axis lock. And despite you guys hearing all the time in comment sections and videos, um, you know, Omega Springs can break, Omega Springs can break. Um, you're not going to, like, if we had, like, exactly, you know, everybody who owned a Benchmade knife, if every single person left a, comments in a, a comment section that, that their springs did not break, you would see that it's substantially more than people who actually have springs break. You're, what I'm saying is, is that you're only going to hear about it when a spring breaks. So I have never had an, an, um, an Omega spring break. Um, anybody who uses their knives for a long period of time, they don't lubricate them. Um, yeah, even inside there on the Omega Springs, then yeah, eventually those kind of parts are, are, are going to break. You know, time, we live in a finite universe. Time is going to destroy everything. Uh, everybody's individual experience is going to be different. Usage environment, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, Axis, um, Omega Springs can break. Do they, are, is it inevitable that they're going to break in a short amount of time? No, they're not. It's, uh, it's, it's very rare that they break. No matter how many times you hear it, uh, it's very rare that they break. And if they do, Benchmade's pretty good about helping you out. In fact, Benchmade has an excellent warranty. As many people point out all the time in my comments section, a lot of what you're paying for in a Benchmade knife, because everybody's like, oh, Benchmades are overpriced. They are a little bit on the high end, okay? But um, And I've had to come to this realization as well. Benchmade knives... Um, not only are made in the United States, and let me point this out as well, they are getting better with their quality control. I've noticed a, a, a definite difference um, in the Benchmade knives that I've handled here recently versus some that I've handled in the last three to four years. They are definitely bringing up, uh, stepping up their quality control game. Uh, but their their uh, warranty is excellent. They take care of you. It's a quick turnaround. They offer um, you know parts to be sent out without your your some parts can be sent out without having to send your knife in. So yeah, that is um, a lot of what you're paying for, and I, I can get on board with that absolutely. So um, on the plus side, the Benchmade bug out does have an ambidextrous locking system that's very easy to manipulate, but you have extra parts and you run the risk of some of them breaking and the, the knife not being usable for a short amount of time while you wait for the warranty. The compression lock, the compression lock is ex uh, exceptionally easy to operate. It is right hand only if I'm correct in thinking that right now. Um, and as far as which one's stronger, they're both incredibly strong. The access lock has proven to be very strong. The compression lock has proven to be very strong. I think... Uh, if I had to give an edge to one, I think the axis lock has proved to be ever so slightly stronger. But what kind of pressure are you going to be putting on your Benchmade bug out where you really need to test that? That's not an important thing to talk about here. Let's talk about hardware. Um, on your um, Spyderco Pair 3, by the way, both of these will be available um, down in my description. I do have Amazon affiliate links, so if you want to buy one or both, um, please feel free to use my links. As well as... Uh, my handy dandy uh, WIA driver set here. I'm going to use my, well, I didn't show it. Did I show it? Here's the uh, WIA uh, bit selector as well as my magnetic driver. There it is. Um, that works really, really well. Um, both of these very inexpensive items. We'll go ahead and check here. I believe the pivot is a T9. Might actually be a little bit higher there. One moment. Sorry about that. Had to cut the video for time. Let's check to be sure. I might be wrong about this. Um, here is a T10. We're going to try that T10 here real quick. Give that a shot. Yeah, we're looking at a T10 there. And then body screws, what are we looking at? Not T10. My guess is probably T8. Either way, that's going to end up being uh, a big positive. And I've talked about this before. I've actually reviewed the pair of three or different versions of it many times. Yeah, body screws are going to be T8. You guys know how I feel about that. I like the larger size, at least T8. I prefer that between the pivot 
and the body screws, they're all the same size, so you don't have to mess around with changing out your bits. Um, but if they're if they're at least T8, then you don't um, run the risk so much, uh, you know, tearing out, up your bits or the heads because it's just a larger size. So that's nice. Um, on the um, bug out here, you're looking at a T8. Now this is an aftermarket pivot, but it is the same as uh, the standard pivot. So you're looking at a T8. Actually, that one's going to be a little bit bigger. It might. These might actually be T9 or T10. As far as the original pivot goes, I'm pretty sure these are modeled exactly the same. I have never actually checked this. Yeah, this act, this aftermarket one is actually a T10. So that's fantastic. Unfortunately, the rest of the body screws I know for a fact on the original bug out are T6. And that sucks because there's a whole bunch of them. Benchmade T6 screws I have had worse luck with than any other T6 screws that are out there. Maybe it's because I've taken apart so many Benchmade Griptilians. But uh, that stinks because we have a platform here. This is important to talk about. With the bug out, you have a platform that is ripe for customization, which means that knife is going to get taken apart and those screws are going to strip. I hate T6. In fact, I stripped one of the screws on that bug out, getting it apart, despite having taken apart dozens of knives. So um, that's kind of frustrating. Um, anyways, you do have a... Um, um, lanyard barrel back here, or lanyard slot back here on this, on these scales, it's the same as the slot, uh, on the original, uh, scales. You can see that slot back there, plenty of room to get a uh, lanyard through there if you like it. Same thing with the, uh, Spyderco Para 3. Um, on this particular version, I've opted for a backspacer, but you do have standoffs in the original. That's fine. Um, and then on the Para 3, you, um, have standoffs. One of the standoffs is a lanyard barrel. Now, in terms of disassembly, despite the Benchmade bug out having T6 screws, I will say it's still easier than the Para 3. Why? Because that lanyard barrel sucks. I, I get the version of the Para 3 that you want initially and don't try to mod it. Uh, taking it apart for general maintenance is fine because you don't have to remove the pivot barrel. You can just scissor the scales out, leaving the pivot barrel, uh, in there. Um, and do your maintenance and put it back together. If you're actually going to mod the knife, the Benchmade bug out is definitely easier. Even with the access bar, it's still easier because you don't have to, getting that, getting these scales off there without ruining the lanyard barrel is, that's, it's almost a magic trick. It, it really is frustrating to do that. Um, so I wanted to point that out there. We also didn't talk about what's inside the pivot on both. Inside the pivot is phosphor bronze. That's excellent, that's what it should be. Both knives operate very smooth. You're going to get some slight variance in uh, your Benchmade bug out, but um, they do definitely break in, absolutely. And in my, my knife's case, there's no play. I have heard some reports of blade play on some bug outs. Um, much more rare to get any blade play with a pair of three. These are also very, very smooth. I've been using this one for a while. It's a little bit caked up, but it's almost falls shut. Um, both of them are very, very easy to manipulate, very easy to deploy. I will say, since we're talking about deployment, um, the uh, the reason for the awkward carry profile uh, on this knife is to make room for that thumb hole. Now, I'm maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I love, I, I find the thumb hole to be the easiest form of deployment, whether you're trying, I did the, the Spidey drop off camera, but uh, <laughs> why would I need to say that? Um, I find that this is very easy to use, whether I am wearing gloves or am I, I'm barehanded or whatever. Um, the Benchmade bug out is, is, is incredibly easy to use, um, you know, doing a reverse flick, forward flick. It's a little bit harder to get at that stud if you're wearing gloves. Maybe I'm a little bit biased. Maybe I'm just more used to the uh, pair of three, but that thumb hole makes it incredibly, incredibly easy um, to manipulate. Um, moving over to the other side, like I said, you do have different standard clips. Um, for each of them. I do not like the standard clip on this guy. I love the standard clip on the Benchmade bug out. I've opted for this one just because it completes the look that I want. Um, other than that, both knives are very much uh, similar to uh, the front, except on the bug out, you have um, a, a non, like a a non-show side of the pivot. And uh, then on this side, you have the adjustment side. On this knife, you have two adjustment sides, but neither are free spinning. This has a D-shaped pivot barrel. On the inside of the pair of three, it has that pivot bushing thing. It's not going to free, neither are going to free spin. You can easily make adjustments on each of them. 
Um, taking a look back here at the uh, stop pin, you can see we have a huge stop pin on the Para 3. That's nice. Um, on this guy, we also have a pretty large stop pin. It's not quite as big. Uh, it's about the same thing though. Um, it's not so much important on these guys because again, in terms of what you would actually be using them for, you're not really going to need parts that are incredibly durable or oversized or anything like that. Both of these knives serve very well in EDC settings. Um, in, uh, you know, camping settings. I mean, they're, they're great, just sort of all around EDC knives. In fact, I'm gonna go so far as to say is we're probably looking at two of the greatest EDC folding knives of all time. So, um, I don't believe that I've left anything out that I really wanna talk about. I mean, there are, there are, you know, there's a gold class version, gold class version of the Benchmade Bug Out that's like $750, and you've got crazy versions of this. This Maxima one right here runs like 190 bucks. You can get the S110V version for like 165. Uh, and then you've got like all these different sprints. And uh, both of these knives have flavors of themselves that are like, you, you can get what you want, right? Benchmade, you need to get this guy in the custom shop so people can just build what they want from the start, even if it does cost them a little bit more money. But if you want a, if you want a custom bug out, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, XXX Adrenaline XXX on eBay uh, has like every anodized titanium part you could possibly imagine. Even my Axis bar is a an aftermarket titanium Axis bar. You know, you want green, purple, blue, bronze, whatever your hardware, you can get it. Even the thumb studs, right? The uh, the pair of three, not quite as customizable, but there are so many different sprints and versions of that thing available. You can get what you want from the start, and you can. Uh, uh, you know, um, easily uh, break it down to do maintenance. Now, I do want to point that out. Despite the Para 3 being harder to take it apart if you're going to mod it, I would say the Para 3 is still easier to take apart in terms of general maintenance. Um, with the bug out, I'd recommend treating it like an integral. Don't actually take um, all the body screws out. Just remove the, uh, the pivot and then remove the blade and then slide it back in. That way you can keep the axis, uh, the bar and everything in place. It's a little bit tricky, but it's a little easier to do. Still though, um, I would say that the Para 3 is a little bit easier to take apart. So um, coming down to it, you know, um, you know, people want to know which one's better. You know, you're, we're doing this battle. You, you haven't really scored anything. It's kept, it's kind of foggy. Well, um, people always get upset with me when I'm like, well, it's circumstantial. You know, choose the one that's best for you. Um, that is the truth. I am going to pick one, right? If you're still here with me at the 17 or 18 minute mark, um, I am going to pick, or wait, 27 or 28 minute mark. <laughs> Sorry, I had to cut the video. Um, but uh, I, I want to say this, you know, they're both so close. Pick the one that you like the looks of. You know, if you're used to the axis lock or you're left-handed or, you know, whatever, um, whatever you're putting value in, pick the one that kind of syncs up with you. Don't, don't choose the one that I say that I like the best. Pick the one that's best for you. If you're more used to the axis lock, go with the axis lock. If you're more used to the compression lock, go with the compression lock. If you like, like the thumb hole better, great, you know, whatever. Um, in terms of value, in terms of which knife you get, there is more value between all the different versions, the best value version out there is the lightweight uh, Para 3. I trust its construction a little bit more. It's less expensive. It's literally the exact same materials. You're just getting a different lock. I think the best value between the two is definitely that one. Um, in terms of which one looks better overall and which one has the potential to look the best, Oh, definitely the bug out. The bug out, I mean, like if you're somebody who really likes to customize their knives and get it exactly the way that you want it, and that's what you put value in, and you don't care about what it's gonna cost you, go with the bug out. Oh my, you can do so much with the bug out. And if you're if you're um you know confident in your ability to take your knife apart and you've got the tools for it and you're patient, then you can get, I mean, in my case, I got a, you know the bug out that I wanted. I had to pay about 270 bucks between the knife and all the parts, but I'm happy with it now. Um, so which one overall is going to be better? Which one would I pick? Well, listen, um, you're looking here, um, let me get this other knife out. Between the Bug Out, the Para 3, and the Spyderco Shaman, you're looking at the three knives that I've carried more than any other knife here recently. These are my top three favorite EDC knives right now. So I've spent a lot of time with each, and I love the Bug Out, and I love the Para 3. For whatever reason, the one that feels a little bit more organic to me um, is the Para 3. Um, I know that I'm in my uh, my utility setting, you know, my, or my, my usage setting, I know that I don't really run a high risk of 
um, the Omega Springs braking because I'm not constantly using it. It's getting pulled out of my pocket a couple of times a day, three times a day maybe to do little cuts here and there. I'm not in a dirty environment. I'm, I'm in a true general office EDC setting and I use different knives outside on the weekend. Um, so I'm not worried so much about that, but for whatever reason, I just like not having to think about those extra parts. There are simply less parts on the Para 3. Um, it's a, a setup that allows me to easily sort of scissor it apart if I need to clean it out and then put it back together. And because of that pivot bushing, for the most part, it just goes right back together exactly the way that it that it came apart. There's a lot less fidgeting with it. This one, you have to kind of redial it in. It's not really that big of a deal, but you do have to do that. I love that the body screws are a larger size, despite spider code screws not being the strongest ones in the entire world. And I love the position of this clip, despite me having to pay a little bit more money for it. You know, let's say, let's pretend this was an S30V Para 3, right? Um, so it was 135, 140 bucks, and then I had to pay another 20 bucks uh, making this somewhere around $150 knife, uh, $155 knife. Is my math correct? I don't know. My point is, is that at that cost, between 150 and 160 to get a knife that um, is US made, has a, 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 tr a dependable locking system that's easy to deploy, that has the ergonomics that I want, has the carry profile that I want, and just feels like a dependable tool. You know, that I've always said that my favorite types of knives are knives that I can carry and not have to think about. I just want to pull it out, make the cut, and put it back in. I don't have to mess with it. I don't have to worry about, am I going to scratch it? Is the Amoga spring going to break? Is, the, is this going to fail? Is that, I, you know, the Para 3, it just throws all that stuff out the window for me. I don't have to worry about it. It's tough enough for what I'm going to use it for. It's easy to deploy. It's easy to put away. I can do it all with one hand, and it's great. And the bug out does a lot of that stuff. You know, if you want to know how close they are for me, um, if the uh, Para 3 is a is a 100, I'm going to say that the bug out is a 90 to a 95. It's excellent, and if you really like it, then go for it. But I like the Para 3 a little bit better. Guys, I hope I thoroughly covered this. This was a really important battle to me because these are two really, really, really popular knives. Um, if I got anything wrong, please feel free to, free to correct me down in the comments section. Like I said, both of these knives are available and I will include multiple forms of each. So whether you're looking for the gray DLC one, the black DLC one, or you're looking for this satin one here up on the bug out, or you're looking for the lightweight Para 3 or the G10 Para 3 or this Maximum Para 3 or an S110V Para 3, I will include as many different versions as I can find down in the description so that you guys can pick those up for yourselves. Um, that's gonna be pretty much it for today's video, guys. I hope that you were at least entertained by this. If you were, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.